Hello and welcome to the home of the Ghost Owl, continuing on with our new series looking at what is currently available to buy right now, a couple of days after the pre-order has gone live for Warhammer the Old World. So we are ignoring Tomb Kings and Bretonians because they've already been released, but we don't have the rules. I can't provide you any of the new information of anything that's been released because I don't have any copies before the actual release date of the 20th. So it'll be a couple of weeks before I can start doing full-on faction focuses and things like that because I physically don't have the information. So in the meantime, we're going to be looking at what is going to be useful to you and that is going to be useful to those of you that aren't interested in Bretonians and Tomb Kings that are going oh, what can I do? Um, you know, what, what army can I go for? What models are available to buy? So continuing on with that series, we're now on to demons. And just as a reminder, we're not going to be covering any of the special characters or unique characters. We're sticking to generic only, uh, but there's no reason why you can't use those named characters as a generic lord. So without further ado, let's jump in to see how the demons stack up after we looked at beastmen last time. Beastmen in a reasonable place. Uh, right now that you could build an army with what's available. So bear in mind, this is all on the Age of Sigmar section on the Warhammer web store, sticking to Warhammer to keep it uh, bounded. So first up, demons with lords. Uh, well, the first one there is a Bloodthirster. Bloodthirster, absolutely available. Obviously, it's used in Age of Sigma and also Warhammer 40k, so Bloodthirster is an easy one. And you've got Scarbrand there as well. Scarbrand, obviously, um, you know, I say st staying away from the um, uh, unique lords, but Scarbrand could easily be used as a bloodthirster himself. So no reason why you couldn't use him uh, as a generic bloodthirster. Lord of Change wise, yep, Lord of Change, absolutely available, as is Kairos Fate Weaver. And this is no surprise, you know, with the fact that demons are in Warhammer 40k, they're in Age of Sigma, it was expected that demons would um, at least have some pretty reasonable number of units for their um, uh, Warhammer the Old World. Obviously, I don't have a copy of what the whole army roster is going to look like for this legacy faction, and this is a legacy faction. Uh, so please bear that one in mind. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the assumption is the bulk of the normal units you'd expect are going to be in there. And uh, all of these greater demons, absolutely there. And a lot of these greater demons, you know, not that old, pretty nice, um, you know, flashed up uh, uh, plastic kits since uh, Warhammer Fantasy finished. So uh, two pretty good kits there. Uh, Kairos Fate Weaver or the Lord of Change. Great unclean one, exactly the same situation as now a plastic one. You don't have to go for the big Forge World one. You've got a plastic great unclean one, and you've got Rotigus, who is the name character, but again, could be used as a generic uh, lord. Now, bearing in mind these greater demons coming in at 430 points, you're not going to be taking too many lords, so the fact that actually you're going to have at least, at least four, if not more, lords available, demons, pretty good place for their characters. And we see that with Keeper of Secrets here. You've got... The Keeper of Secrets generic, and you've got Shalaxi Hellbane again, could be used as a generic Keeper of Secrets. So Keeper of Secrets, actually one of my favourite of the uh, uh, redone uh, Greater Demons, I think looks absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, but there you have the flavour for all of the main Mark Demon Lords. But also in the Lord section, you have the Gaunt Summoner of Zinch. So the Gaunt Summoner there, available in two flavours. Uh, with the same name, Gaunt Summoner of Zinch, or you go for the Gaunt Summoner of Zinch on disc, as you can see here. So both of those available, and uh, disc is absolutely one of his available mounts. If Slanish Lords are more your thing, you have the Infernal Enrapturess as a Lord. Um, so Infernal Enrapturess there, absolutely available. Uh, again, a pretty crazy looking... Uh, <laughs> A miniature this one uh, but yes as a lord available if slanesh is more your thing okay and the next one then and the last of the actual lords is the demon prince you got a reasonably new demon prince kit here and there's no reason why you couldn't use bellicor as a demon prince though obviously please bear in mind that um, he is a very very large model so when thinking about base sizes that of the requirements that you get that are going to be in the uh, Warhammer of the Old World, you know, you might just have to uh, think about how that's going to work. Uh, but uh, but there's no reason why you couldn't use Bellacor as a demon prince in all but the most stringent tournament uh, settings. And that is all of the demon lords. Uh, every single lord that you would want um, 
whether you know there's a good chance that most of them are going to be in the you know all the four greater demons would i'm sure are going to be in the army list um and as a demon prince whether the infernal rapturess and the gaunt summoner will be in there remains to be seen um we we just don't know you know we've heard i've heard some rumors about you know uh uh, iconic um, units and miniatures not being in standard army lists, but we'll wait to see. But certainly, you know, you can expect Bloodthirsters, Great and Clean Ones, Demon Princes to absolutely be in a legacy demon army list. So pretty safe to buy into those. And when you get into then the Demon Heroes, so again, staying away from the named characters and looking at generic. So we're looking at essentially the Herald of Corn. You've got actually a number of options here. You've got the Bloodmaster, as he's listed on the Age of Sigmar area, which is a Herald of Corn. You've got Skull Taker there, who there's no reason why you couldn't use him as a Herald of Corn. You've got Rendmaster, which is a Herald of Corn on the Blood Throne. And then you've also got a Skull Master, which is a Herald of Corn on Juggernaut. So for, if you're going down the Cornate path, you've got plenty of different options for your heroes in terms of heralds. And as I said, if you're going down a Greater Demon, you're into 400 plus points, which is what's in the old 8th um, uh, Army book. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I can't imagine they're going to be too much difference in points. I expect them to still be quite expensive. You're not going to be having maybe maybe having one or two heroes and your and your main greater demon if that's the the route you're going. But corn in a pretty good place here. As is Seench. Seench in even better place. You've got the blue scribes could be used as a herald. You've got the flux master who is a herald of Seench. You've got the changeling. He could be used as a herald. The herald uh, doesn't have to be on a disc. That's an optional mount. So that would give you a herald on foot as would the change caster. And then you've got fate skimmer who is a herald of Seench on a burning chariot. So you've pretty much got all flavors there with the different mounts included as well so again a lot of choice so you know when you start thinking about oh well games workshop only released bretons and tomb kings well there's a huge amount out there of, of miniatures that you can buy for warhammer the old world that that will work absolutely straight away out the box on the 20th when all the rules are released and assuming the legacy pdfs that come out on the 20th which we still don't 100 percent know if it's actually going to be on the 20th when it comes to Nurgle, there's slightly less options. Uh, you've got uh, Sloppity Biopiper could be used as a herald, as could Poxbringer. And then you've got Epidemius uh, there as well. Um, he could be used as a herald of Nurgle. Uh, and uh, he's seen the herald of Nurgle uh, in terms... They get a pla palanquin or a plague toad. That's the palanquin. Uh, it doesn't appear to be any plague toads available across the whole piece now for... Uh, Nurgle so um, the only mount that you could get for your herald is uh, the palanquin so Nurgle not doing quite as well as Corn and Zinch and then when it comes to Slanesh again not quite as good as Corn uh, and Zinch but you have the mass could be used as a herald Silesk possibly used as a herald as well uh, and then you've got the Transweaver which is the actual herald of Slanesh miniature here but there's no reason why you couldn't use the mask potentially as a herald of Slanesh. Okay, and then the final hero in the Demon's Book is the Exalted Flamer of Zinch. He's absolutely available, you can see him there. And so that rounds out the hero. So again, not a single unit missing from your character slots. You can actually find something to match every single character that you might expect to see in a Warhammer the Old World army list for the Demons. But what about the core units? Core units are obviously key. And yep, these are core. They're core to the faction. They're core to demons. And that makes them core to Warhammer 40k Age of Sigma, And therefore, they are going to be available. So Blood Letters of Corn, absolutely available, as you can see them here. Plague Bearers of Nurgle, also available. As are the Demonettes of Slanesh. And as are the Pink Horrors and Blue Horrors. So you can see you've got the Pink Horrors here. You've got the Blue Horrors with some brimstones in the back. So again, all of the key core units there available uh, for the demons. Those are obviously the uh, specific ones for each of the gods. However, you also have the option of Flesh Hounds of Corn available. They are still available, so these aren't just Warhound replacements. These are actually the Cornate Flesh Hounds. 
and you also have nurglings available as well so again you've got you're getting a quite a few different options for core here um, not just having to go with plague bearers so there's nurglings in there there's the flesh hand in there depending you know whether you're going multiple gods mono god that sort of thing also seekers of slanesh to give you a bit of cavalry in there as well so if you're going down the slaneshi route seekers absolutely available uh, and uh, give you some additional options and just foot slogging infantry which is very nice to give you that flexibility and Screamers of Zinch as well, also available. So all of these available to buy right now today. And uh, Screamers, again, giving you a bit of flexibility there um, in terms of, uh, of what you're taking, not just big blocks of foot slogging infantry. So then we move on to the special units. So Demons, Lords and Heroes, absolutely in a, in a great place uh, in terms of core nearly everything available and pretty much everything that you could probably want is available and now we're on to the special units so let's see what we've got here so blood crushers of corn absolutely available there and again pretty cool looking models so i mean corn overall corn and zinch i think are definitely doing the best overall slanesh and then nurgle's probably the one that's furthest behind i think in terms of having availability or variety of uh, miniatures to choose from but blood crushers of corn absolutely available giving you some hard hitting cavalry seeker chariot of slanesh on the slanesh route so yeah absolutely available and i say where the name is different on the website i will note it but here in these names are all exactly the same so you type seeker chariot and it will come up and there it is pretty cool looking model as well Flamers of Zinch, yeah, we saw the Exalted Flamer is available, so it makes sense that the Flamers are also available, and here they are. So Flamers of Zinch are available, so again, plenty of variety here in your uh, Demon Special Units. Beast of Nurgle, uh, so Beast of Nurgle is available. In fact, as I said, Corn and Zinch are, are doing the best overall. Their Blood Beasts and Fireworms are not available, yet the Beasts of Nurgle and the uh, Fiends of Slanesh are. So you've got a Beast of Nurgle here, absolutely available if that's something that you want in terms of a monstrous beast. And then you've got the Fiends of Slanesh here also as monstrous beasts. So yeah, Demons being a legacy book, you know, we're not going to see any new models. What you've got here in this... Uh, presentation is pretty much what is going to be available miniature wise unless there is um, unless the, the range is refreshed or redone for 40k or age of sigma or unless there is some made to order so just keep that in mind but fiends absolutely available giving you some monstrous beasts moving on to the rare units what do we have here? Well, we've got the Skull Cannon of Corn. That's nice because that does give you something different in terms of just having to get up close and personal. Uh, absolutely available there in the rare category and coming in at a hefty 240 points in 8th edition. It's probably not going to be too far behind that, I would imagine, in Warhammer the Old World. Uh, and therefore, you know, takes up a pretty hefty allocation of the rare slot. But, you know, Plague Drones of Nurgle also available. Give you something flying, uh, which again, giving you that tactical flexibility of units so at least you've got plenty of choice depending on what you want to do whether you're going mono god multi god you want a fast moving army do you want large blocks of infantry style army you know the flexibility in the available the flexibility given by the availability uh, of miniatures is absolutely there for demons so demons wouldn't be a bad choice uh, of legacy army right now as we stand today hellflare slanesh again also available so there's that uh, rare choice um, as is the burning chariot of zinch again also available so as you can see i mean demons they got a lot of choice you know when you look at it and go how many miniatures there's a lot of choice out there for warhammer the old world you don't have to go down the tomb king and bretonian route to pretty much put some armies together and there's actually quite a few as you'll see as we go through the series of armies that you can pretty much build fully complete competitive armies competitive in terms of the number of miniatures they have available because i don't know what the rules look like contorted epitome also there in a rare unit that is available um, as is the soul grinder which is the last unit in the army book roster and that's the eighth edition army book like i say i don't know right now 
which of these units are going to be included and which are not. I would expect most of certainly the Monogod specific ones to be in there, whether the Soul Grinder will be in there, whether the Inferno and Rapture S will be in there, uh, remains to be seen. But you know, you're pretty safe with Bloodthirsters, Bloodletters, Skull Crushers, all that sort of stuff, I would imagine. Um, uh, and so, you know, but overall, Demons, pretty hefty selection nearly all of their units available from the old 8th edition army book and if you see this is what was actually missing so chaos furies and plague toads from the core really doesn't matter pox riders of nurgle blood beasts of corn and fireworms of zinch in my mind none of those units matter at all to a demon army and that everything that you would want from a demon army is currently there available uh, say bearing in mind yes i'm aware it's a legacy army but that does mean what you see here is what you get. And uh, we'll see how that pans out in the future. There you go. That brings us to the end of the Demons look at what you can buy right now today. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. It's totally free for you and it's a big deal for me. So thank you for that in advance. You've been watching The Ghost Hour. I'll see you all very, very soon.